Um, so I'm going to tag team this presentation with Brian Boyd. Uh, we're both from Vanderbilt University. My name is Steve Damon. And uh, before we start, we'd just like to thank Ben as well, who really did a lot of the uh, legwork getting what we're going to talk about going. So we appreciate it. Uh, so we're going to talk about DAX, which is Distributed Automated uh, Automation for XNAT on large scale image processing in the High Performance Computer Center at Vanderbilt. Uh, so we just want to give you kind of a high bird's eye view of our XNet system before Brian goes into how it works, what it does, why we're doing this, how, you know, all the cool things that we've done with it. And then we'll show you at the end how we control it. Uh, so our XNet has got about 280 projects in it, uh, a little bit more than 37,000 subjects, around 65,000 sessions, and right around 245,000 assessors. So we're very heavily involved in doing QA. Uh, our primary focus on this is running a first pass on almost any single data file that comes in. And we'll get into what we actually run a bit later. But we're really interested in, OK, was the participant compliant during the scan? Did it work? Did you get the data that you thought you were going to get? Uh, we've got about 200 terabytes of online storage. Um, up there are some of the projects that we've logged in. Uh, we want to put the whole HCP project in, which it was kind of great to hear that other people have done this. Uh, but we're a little bit wary right now because we don't have enough storage space. Um, we have a Hyper-V cluster with a dual front-end system, which was really also awesome to hear. And thanks to the XNet group here for helping us get that set up. That was fantastic. Um, that we have one that handles all of the REST requests and another one that users log into. We had lots of requests hitting at the same time at frequent hours, and our users weren't the most happy when that happened. And then finally, we have a DCM for cheap hacks that sits in between XNet and the 2.3T magnets and 1.7T, as well as the OCT system, which has a reroute rule set up. Uh, so now Brian's going to give you a little bit of an overview of how the whole thing works. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about this already today. I'm just going to hold this. Um, so this is what our system uh, layout looks like. So our, the, the, our primary goals were really to sort of integrate existing systems that people were using at Vanderbilt. Um, and so those are XNAT, REDCap, and Acre, which is our computing center. So it's a cluster, shared cluster, that um, you can pay to use their services. And so what we wanted to do is integrate these things, and we wanted to handle large projects, public projects like HCP, but also handle ongoing projects. Um, and those at times have been kind of competing with each other uh, for time, space, um, support. And so what we came up with is what we call DAX. Um, and so DAX runs on a gateway, which is basically a dedicated node in, on the cluster. Um, and various groups pay for their own gateways to, to run on the cluster. And basically what that means is you can run long running jobs um, or infinite jobs. So um, what does DAX do? So basically. It queries the REST API for what data do you have, and then based on what you've already configured in DAX, it launches jobs that need to be launched on the cluster, keeps track of where those jobs are, whether they are still running, whether they failed or not, and then um, puts the results back into XNet. That's pretty much all there is to it. So how does it actually get stored? So uh, from the very beginning, we wanted a really simple data type that we could use just across the board for any type of data. And so this is what we came up with. Um, and this actually handles information about the, the batch job itself and then also the outputs of the job. Um, so we can use this data type to track where the job is in the process, whether it's uh, finished or failed, and whether, um, and then we also store the wall time that it used and the memory that it used. So just a single data type, really simple, but that's been all we've really needed. And then the other thing we use is, which is not up here, is the validation uh, fields in the default XNet schema to actually store the status of the QC. And then we've also customized the GUI. So we wanted to be able to store all of these data in the assessors. Uh, so we sort of customized this table. Um, our PI told us to limit our customization as much as possible <laughs> so that they survived upgrades. So this is all we've really done. Uh, but 
We made some improvements to this table so that some columns are sortable. Um, you can click on the little show counts to see all the resources that are there. Um, the resources, it doesn't show this here, but each one is a downloadable zip file, so you don't have to click so many times to actually get to the files that you really want to download. Um, and then every processing that we do, every processing type, generates its own PDF. Um, and that PDF is meant to display whether the pipeline worked. Uh, and that should be something that a user can click on, review the results, and decide whether to set the QA to pass or fail. And those PDFs can be as simple as a single image or up to, you know, some of them are like 20 pages long. But we wanted it to be something static, something that you could download and send off to a colleague um, if you wanted somebody else to review your results. And I think I'm handing it back to you now. Cool. Um, so I'm going to show now some examples of the spiders, as so we've called them, which are basically just a processing algorithm. It's just a name that we've come up with. Uh, so right now we've got about 160 different ones that we're running. Um, it, these are some examples. So in the upper left, which is A, that is DTIQA. So we're looking to see if the gradients actually fit uh, when we're fitting the tensors. So the left black column there is supposed to be the best fits, and then right next to it is the worst fits. So if they both kind of look like tensors, we did really well. Uh, in the upper right-hand corner is movement, so we can see if the person shifted a lot, so we can deal with center frequency drift if there was any type of movement. So that's, that's good to know. Um, we also look at the B0 image to see if there's any bias in it. We do some power calculations as well. So we just have kind of a general idea of does this thing actually work? Was this data useful? Was the participant compliant? Same thing for fMRI QA, which is B up there. We've got an SNR image on kind of the bottom right, a histogram as well, and then also a general comment of is the data good, bad, or eh, basically. Uh, C is multi-atlas. We perform a lot of multi-atlas brain segmentation. We've got about 30 atlases that we non-rigidly -rigid register, and then we perform a segmentation of about 130 ROIs in the brain. Uh, D is white matter stamper, so we stamp out regions uh, based on the multi-atlas in C uh, in combination with DTIQA to get FA values in a multi-atlas framework as well. E is a uh, non-rigid registration to atlas, so we just take the T1 scan and register it to atlas space. Uh, F is free surfer, at least one page of it. Uh, we run free surfer a lot on plenty of projects. Almost every single person who uses this wants to at least see free surfer. And uh, G at the end here is uh, Tracula, I believe. So we, we run that a lot too on a bunch of projects. And kind of outside of these, we also have a lot of hardy methods that we've been developing recently as multi bands come online at Vanderbilt. And we're really kind of pushing that to you know, increase the amount of volumes we can get in the same amount of time. Uh, we've also started using ASL a lot. We have structural connectivity, uh, DTI connectivity, um, spleen, abdomen, optic nerve segmentation, brain segmentation, uh, lots of DTI tractography, uh, and then a lot of stuff also wrapped into the multi-atlas framework. So there's a, there's a large amount of data there. Um, one of the coolest things that we had that just came out recently was called MA Cruise. So this builds after the multi-atlas brain segmentation pipeline has run. And the idea here is to provide consistent surfaces just like FreeSurfer gives you for the outer surface, the inner surface, and then also the gray-white boundary. So these surfaces are generated in the exact same way as FreeSurfer. Uh, you can load them into FreeView if you want to look at them. You can inflate them. You can throw them through a QDEC if you want. So th this is something cool that just came out within the past couple months. And I believe it either went to Spy or Mackay. Um, and then one thing that's really kind of cool about this is, and we went over this briefly in the breakout session today, which was really awesome, is DAX handles the graph of processing. Uh, and the way that we do it is how Brian said. We, we have identifiers of need inputs, which basically means I'm pending. I'm waiting for something to run. It doesn't really matter what it is. It could be a file. It could be an assessor. It could be waiting for someone to QC the assessor, which is very common. Uh, but here at the highest level, we have just kind of scans, right? So we've got DTI, flare, T1, resting state, task, fMRI, ASL, really anything you want to throw at it. Um, and then below that, we have our very first level passive stuff. So we've got DTI QA, lesion segmentation tool, free surfer, uh, multi atlas, VBM QA, blah, 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 right? Lots of common stuff that almost everybody runs. And then below that, we have tasks that will wait in queue. And these are waiting until the previous process either finishes or finishes and has been QC'd. By default, we wait for them to be QC'd, but you can override it if you want. And that's kind of helpful for really big projects, but you can shoot yourself in the foot. 
Uh, and then kind of after all of that, we have kind of first level analyses for fMRI and, and that type of stuff. Uh, w one more thing that we've done with spiders is try to standardize QA workflows on this. Uh, a lot of people have been interested in, especially with FreeSurfer, editing FreeSurfer. It, it never really works right the first time around, especially if you're working with aging data. So we've got some standardized methods that we've pre-configured uh, to download data, edit it, put it back up, and rerun the pipeline. Um, just a couple tools that we've made. XNAT Upload is probably the easiest thing to use that we've written, and it's so easy that my boss can even use it, which is shocking. He can barely write code, but he can use XNAT Upload. All it is is a CSV file that says, where, where's my data? Uh, similar to XNAT Download, he can use that. He downloads data from BLSA and ships it to him, somehow. Um, XNAT Check provides you a pseudo queryable language to try to figure out based on what proc type, what the QC status is, validation status, all that good stuff. You can search that, query your project, get a list of sessions or assessors. XNAT Mirror is something that Brian worked on recently, and uh, it's really cool. You can copy one project, all custom fields, whatever you want from one XNAT instance to another. So it's really pretty slick. And then more recently, we've been working on some Postgres tools. Uh, XNet Info, which gives you a summary of uh, your project status, scans, assessors, all that good stuff. And then something that we just finished working recently was uh, called Assessor Util. We had a project where we needed to build about 37,000 assessors. It was looking at optic neuritis patients and a whole bunch of glaucoma and that type of stuff. Um, our current development server, or, or not development, production server is taking about 30 days to get through all of that just because it's so heavily loaded. So we wrote this, which just mirrors the exact calls that are made in Postgres, and it ran in about two and a half hours. So we were pretty happy with that speed increase, and it, it seems to work uh, pretty well. So switching gears right now, we're just going to talk about REDCap real quick. And REDCap is an online database that Vanderbilt's developed. It's HIPAA compliant. Uh, it's used at over 1,800 institutions. It's a data dictionary driven workflow, which now hopefully everyone here can use to automatically be uploaded and build a database. Uh, there's API support. You can sync clinical data from the hospital labs at Vanderbilt, which is really kind of a new thing that they've worked on, and it's pretty awesome. So you can say, hey, for this person, give me all their blood work that was done on this day, and just kind of drops into your REDCap database, and it works. Um, and then also what's really nice about this is there's a lot of extensive support and intro documentation on it for new users who haven't used it. You can really get up and going on it in about a day, which is fantastic. For, that, for the uh, pulling the last equipment data, is that from an Epic system? Yeah, it's from Epic. Okay. So there's a couple places we're using REDCap. One is to actually uh, manage which processing is um, running on each Project. So we were doing all this by hand, and we decided that we were, it was just becoming unwieldy. So many projects, too many processing types. So Ben built this uh, REDCap database where we can actually go in and configure each pipeline for each project. And then there's a tool called DAX Manager, which will pull down your config file for DAX and run it from there. Then we're also dumping all of the stats from each processing type into a REDCap database. Um, and you can click on these and here we're actually storing project subject kind of a copy of everything from XNAT but then also each processing type can have uh, as many fields as you need to actually store tabular data so this one's fMRI so this is actually storing all of the motion variables um, with that so real quick this is what I've been working on most recently that I really like uh, so at this point you've got several data sources and that we were talking about this in the red cap uh, breakout that you've got data now in XNAD and the pre-archive, the archive, you have multiple red cap databases and you really want to bring it all back together um, to provide some overview of what's going on in the project. So what we've been doing is trying to pull it all together into this project summary report where you can actually see for each session just an overview of each type of experiment that you're doing like did it pass, fail, QA, does it, do we need to do the QA? Uh, and then with that, we can actually generate some charts, graphs of what's going on in the project. So for this, you can, for each processing t type, you can provide your own little graph chart. So you can answer questions like, are my analysts actually keeping up with the QA? Are they actually doing their jobs? Uh, and then, you know, how many failures have I had? Um, so you can go back and if something is consistently going wrong with your scan, then you can maybe tweaks and parameters, um, and then you can see, you know, like a summary of the motion 
in your fMRI, um, which people like to report. Uh, same thing with DTI. Um, so it would be really nice to get this to actually work within the XNAT system, if that's something we could talk about. Um, and then these are all of the internal PIs that we work with. So these are really across multiple uh, departments, a lot of clinical people, um, primary clinical people, actually. Um, and then some quick acknowledgments. 